Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will enhance our VS Code environment so that it looks visually more appealing, causes less distractions and ultimately makes you more productive. So we will go through a list of settings, themes and extensions to achieve a more minimal look and feel. Now I am predominantly a front-end developer, so I mainly work with JavaScript, React and sometimes Node. And all these settings that we're going to go through are catered more towards the front-end workflow. However, if you like to have a cleaner, more minimal workspace, then this is the video for you, whether you write JavaScript, PHP or even SQL. So what you see on the screen is what we're going to make our VS Code editor look like ultimately. We will start with the plain old layout of VS Code and work our way up from there. Now, I know that some people don't care about this stuff, but to be honest, the way that my workspace looks greatly impacts my levels of productivity. Okay, so without any further ado, let's jump in. Right, so we're going to get started with the default layout of VS Code. But before we make any changes, let me walk you through some of the settings that I already have in place. So the easiest way to customize and view your settings is to actually open the settings.json file. So go ahead and open up your VS Code preferences. And once you're here, in this search field, type settings.json. And once the file appears right there, just click on this edit in settings.json button. This is going to open a new file and this is where all your settings live. So these are all my default settings like the font size, font family, line height, etc. So go ahead and take a look and see if you want to apply any of these changes to your code editor. These are all pretty basic so I don't think you need any of these anyway. But still if you fancy any of these, feel free to copy them. Okay. So now let's talk about some of the things that I want to change. So first things first, I want to hide this activity bar. I just don't like the look of it and I think it takes unnecessary space. Now you may be thinking that how am I going to access these icons like the debugger, git or extensions. Well fear not, I will show you how to do that when we get to that part. Next up, I want to hide this, this open editors tab. Again, I just feel like it takes up extra space and you can see all your open files in this top bar anyway. And I also want to get rid of this status bar because I just don't like the look of it. And if I want to view any of the errors or the warnings that I may have, I can just go to my debugger panel and just view them there. So these are probably the, the some of the big things that I want to change. But alongside that, I also want to change some of the colors, which you will see once we have all the settings in place. Okay, so now to actually get rid of this absolutely hideous workspace, all we need to do is make a few tweaks in our settings.json file. For that, we are going to copy a few settings that I've already written and we're going to paste them right here. So open up your web browser and go to this link github.com forward slash Hamza hyphen Mirza forward slash VS code hyphen settings. Excellent. Once you've done that, open up this settings.json file. And once you're here, press this raw button and this is going to give you the absolute bare bone structure of this JSON file. And here's all the settings that we actually need to copy and then paste them in our settings.json file. So go ahead and copy everything inside of this file. Go back to your VS Code and inside of this file, right below your final line in the settings.json file, type a new comma, go to a new line and paste everything right here. So now let's go ahead and press save and boom. This is a lot easier on my eyes. So all these commands are pretty self-explanatory. They should be pretty easy to customize because I have commented them very appropriately. So if you want to change any of these colors, you can change them here. Or if you prefer to keep the default color schemes of the theme that you're using, then you can just comment out these properties, the ones that have the colors in them. And you can just carry on using the, the default themes. The, sorry, I'm sorry, the default colors that come with the theme. So speaking of themes, let's talk about some of the themes that I like to use. So let me just op open up a JavaScript file. So the one theme that I really like is this one dark space gray. 
Another one that I like to use is called, and you might have seen this a lot if you follow me on Instagram, is this popping and locking theme. I used this for a long time, but now I've moved on to a more minimal theme, which is called Fidu or Fedu, however you want to pronounce it. Um, I think it looks great. It's just very minimal and I like the way it looks and feels. So now that's it for the themes. And now let's move on to the extensions. And to be honest, I don't have many because VS Code already have some great built-in features. But some of the extensions that I like to use actively are Emmet, the Git Project Manager, Docker, the Node Debug, and the final one is Path Autocomplete. Now, I'm not going to go through what each of these extensions does, but these are all super helpful and make life a lot easier. So speaking of extensions, I like to have an extension for my file icon themes. So I don't like the current theme of my file icons. And the one that I like to use is called, let me just show you, is this Moxer icon theme. Okay, so now if you don't have this theme installed, you actually have to install it first. But how do you actually access the installer? Because to go to, to install something in VS Code, you need the, you know, the, whatever it's called, I think it's called the extensions tab. So, but we, we got rid of all these icons that live in the activity bar. So how do we actually access them? Well, to access the extension manager, you can use the command. So the command for the extension manager is command shift and X. And here you can actually install the theme. So in my case, the file icon theme is called Moxa, which I already have installed. If you don't just type in Moxa there and it will give you the Moxa icon theme. And here is where all of your pre-installed extensions live and the ones that you want to install as well. And now to access the source control, you can use control shift and G. And then to access your debugger, you can use command shift and D. And finally, to go back to your file explorer, you can use command shift and E. Perfect. And you can even take this one step further. If you want to keep things ultra minimal, you can even hide this sidebar by using the command and B command. So this command key and then the B key on your keyboard. And then you can actually toggle it. So if you press the same combination again, command B, you will get to see your sidebar back again. And as for the font that I'm using, it's called Dank Mono that I actually acquired from a work colleague. She was kind enough to give me a copy of her license. So yes, thanks to her. And the project that you see in my editor is actually the React recipe tutorial that I created last year and you guys seem to really like it. But I recently found out that the Food to Fork website, which is the web API that we use in this tutorial has been shut down. So I'm currently rebuilding the whole thing using a new API service and the project is almost complete. I just need to start recording it now, which I will do in a few days. And as for my plans for next year, I really want to create more tutorials for you guys. Honestly, my first ever React tutorial did unexpectedly well and I can't thank you guys enough for that. So yeah, thank you for watching it. So my focus for next year is to build some more React focused applications and upload them on here. And I will definitely try and squeeze in some Redux tutorial as well. So as always, thank you for watching and I shall see you soon. Goodbye.